thanks for joining us this morning. Um, already uh, voting has started and already we are seeing so many uh, things happening and, and of course we are not surprised because those are the consequences that we were looking forward to seeing some showdown and definitely we were not disappointed the showdown uh, has started but so far how would you describe the exercise? Um, thank you very much um, Aisha, thank you and um, thank you to the um, listeners and viewers um, I just arrived from um, Infantiman, actually. Okay, um, you went to I went to vote. Vote, okay. Yes. Oh, nice. I went to vote for uh, nice. my candidate. Who did you vote for? Oh, for the incumbent <laughs> MP. Okay. Ophelia Mensah Hayford. Oh, um, all right. Uh, you know why? I'm, I'm a strong believer in women empowerment, actually. That's true. Um, my mom, a hard woman, brought me up when I served Margaret Thatcher Prime Minister. <laughs> That's when true. When you have a strong woman, who know what they want? Follow them. Her seat, actually, <laughs> is not one of the, the seats that is shaking. I think she is actually well, she Well, she, is, she is consolidated it. Um, actually won more votes than the partner the husband did okay. in 2016 okay. and so we are hoping that she would uh, go back to back with these ways um, so I went to support her um, you think that woman is a woman factor playing yes, a, woman a role factor. it's a woman factor okay uh, we need to we need to promote our, our young ladies and sisters and young girls who and politics has become men uh, male dominated mm. sometimes women shy away from it so yeah. when I see a, a strong woman in there, I will go for it. Mm. Um, but apart from that, she's also a strong, world-determined lady. Um, first time MP, she's done an awful lot of development, um, championing areas that people thought no, no development had gone there. I tried to reach every community when I was there, but I served only one term, don't forget. Mm -hmm. And so serving this next one after her late husband mm. she's consolidated that so she's expanded um but don't forget i was a i was a minister yeah. when i served one term she's the backbencher mm. so comparatively she's done well okay. and so she's competent and she's very eloquent woman and reach out to the people she's a woman she brings everybody on board mm -hmm. um unfortunately like my part when i was ending it was like okay. everybody wanted it so we, there was a division but yeah. she's bringing them together which mm. Is one of the reasons why I support her. Huh? Um, the other two are my colleagues, are my friends. In fact, one Amwa is uh, former first vice chairman. Mm. I mean, I know him very well. He was part of my campaign, mm. and Corsa Brown too has been around. So, um, whoever wins, but I know Ophelia will win. I, win. So. I saw the ground. And <laughs> in politics, you look at the body language, and um, you also touch base. So before you go there, you talk. Okay. And I think um, it definitely I'm winning looks too. like you're on the winning team. But, okay. but, but I've, I've been listening to our, uh, other areas. Um, obviously, my ears are everywhere. Yeah. Um, this is crucial for the MPP. It's how we go through this peacefully and come out as a united group. Yeah. Um, again, at the constituency level, the election of 2024 December this year uh, will be more of a, what I call a... a, 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 a a combat, hand-to-hand -hand combat okay. between us and the NDC. You got to go down. You can't stay up here. Um, it's constituency battlefield. So you need to look at what constituency, where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are, and begin to utilize your strengths. Mm. And and so listening, I'm I'm happy. It's been cool everywhere. Mm. We're just about what about an hour and a half away from closing, mm. and I haven't picked up any. In a dance here so quite already, your, your colleague Katie Hammond has been fighting his contender, uh, uh, being for Samuel being for. He says yes. that he beat his boys to pulp and he's actually reported the issue to the police. You've well, he, he not heard that? Did. I, yeah, don't think he I mean, he did it personally. Whether but, it was his boys or. Okay. But he's actually accusing him. Okay, I haven't picked up that signal, but there was a problem, a skirmish there um, during the vetting and all that. But I thought they've overcome that. Um, I think Katie would handle that with care. Just a minute, just a minute after you, I mean, before you came here, I, I was speaking with Katie Hammond, and he's still, his temper is so high, high, and he feels that the, his contender must be brought to book, and he says he will handle him himself, but this is not healthy for the contest. Um, uh, Katie sometimes, um, you know, will say things that it's, it's, a, it's, it's a very... It's emotional. You, you know Katie. Yeah. Katie would say it, but he doesn't mean to harm me. The contest has been a bit of heated from the, the betting time. Yeah. There are some few areas where the uh, heat for the party should have taken firm stance. 
Uh, the party also thought, look, let's all let go through, go and beat him. If you can beat him, go and beat him. <laughs> um, so it's, it's like an open field. They thought we've betrayed him in a way. Um, but Katie is a, is a fighter, is a politician. He gets, uh, he, he fights with his hat on his sleeves. You know that, that's mm -hmm. what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, but I believe it will calm down. Um, and that's the only place I've heard skirmishes. The other skirmishes where you, we thought uh, my happen was a Bantima one, where yeah. the showdown, the showdown, the showdown has where already his brother is, um, <laughs> It's threatening to show down my, my young man, um, <laughs> friend and brother, Asensu. I, so I believe Asensu would win at, at the end of the day. I believe he would win. You believe I've, so? I've, all I've been touching base with the, every people on the ground. It's not uh, going to be I've that I've been a local simple. government minister, you know. Okay. And I know the ground. <laughs> Don't forget, I've also gone through a national chairmanship campaign okay. and I touch base. Okay. So I've got people everywhere that I talk to. Mm. But, but it Asensu. will be tough. He may win. Oh, oh, yes, oh, yes. He may win, but it won't be oh, easy yes, for him. He will him. give a, a run for his money. Um, don't forget that the whole of Kennedy uh, 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 is there. Um, Kennedy is my brother. He's also one of the fighters we got. And so that area is an isolated incident. But it makes them stronger. It, it energizes the party. Mm. It, so long as it doesn't end up in the uh, handcuffs. Oh, handcuffs. Yeah. What, 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 yeah. what is it? Yeah, 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 handcuffs. Yes. yes. And, That's and, it. and does it end up in a serious fight or argument or insult? Um, a contest brings sometimes the worst of people, if you don't know. Yeah. Uh, we hope it will just end up in a cool uh, um, state and they will they'll be friends again. Okay. Um, they, they talk, but somehow when they go to the public domain, it's like it flares up. But Bantam must seem like um, a, a big deal for the NPP. It is a big deal. Bantam, if you know the history of since the fourth Republican administration, Bantam is a hot cake. For the NPP, that's where we used to get our maximum votes from. I remember 2000 election, I was um, helping Dan Butcher, who was the general secretary in the party headquarters, collating the results. And I remember Bantema came in and knocked off about two regions. <laughs> Just one constituency. Just one constituency. They knocked two regions off. Okay. Um, I also quite remember an incident where we had Ketu South come in. And um, no, no, Ketu South didn't come in. And Bantema had not come in. So I had to make a strategic decision mm -hmm. um, from my end. What do we do? Which one do I announce first? Because we had our results earlier than even the electoral commissioner. Okay, yeah. Uh, before I, I, I Okay. And so I decided where uh, to, to give to uh, the general secretary to take it to the strong room and which one we are. So we kept Bantama to our chest for a while. Mm. And when Bantama came, knocked everybody off. You knocked everybody off. So we don't joke with Bantama. <laughs> I remember during the evening, the um, appointment session, I, I had the privilege of talking to President J. Kufo, mm. who was the president elect. And I said, That's President, right. don't forget Bantima. At least Anani should get some. Okay. <laughs> For the most he pulled. So we don't joke with Bantima. Bantima. Do, 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 yeah, but, but uh, uh, the one question that many will ask is, if you don't joke with Bantama and you really know the guy to pull the votes for you, why give him a contest? I'll come back to that. Now using you as a reference point, you heard the Samuel Benfo uh, talking about why Katie Hammond should rest because he's been there for too long. But, but uh, aside what he's saying, there's been some conversations going on that Katie Hammond is actually showing too much that he's actually threatened by his contender. Again, as his constituents have been, uh, you know, accusing him of one thing or the other leading up to the, this primaries, it, it, it does make, it makes the, it, it muddies the water for him. Um, I, I, will, I will call for calm in, in KT, in Adansia Sokwa. Uh, let me use that. No, okay. Katie has been around for long. I've known Katie from campus time. We, we fought um, even military government. We, we were in exile together. We, we formed them. In fact, we were the founding fathers of the party in, in, in exile mm. before they lifted ban in, in politics in Ghana. So Katie has this passionate, that's him. As I say, he wears his, his hat on his sleeves. Mm. And he's one of the passionate politicians I've seen. Uh, very honest, but very passionate. Um, Sometimes you mistake his passionate him to be aggression. It's not the case. It, uh, and I like his, his, his enthusiasm to bring people together. That's a, that's, a, that's a very heated contest you can hear from his contender. Mm -hmm. um, the, he believes that, look, you've come in, obviously, lately, um, and he's been around, so, so, so bid your time and let me go nicely. Of course, he is a challenger. He wants, he wants to come in. So it's a serious contest going on there. But I'll call for calm. Um, whoever wins, we would have to work together as a team. 
Um, but I believe K2 will win. I mean, I know the contender. I've met him just a few times, but I couldn't recognize him as I, I looked at his face. But he's, he's obviously also passionate. Look, mm. the way he's speaking, he can rally people behind. Yeah. Why the two of them? You, you notice what's happening. They, it's just some argument going on. We haven't had a proof of anybody beating. Yeah. The police have not picked up anybody. So it's allegations for now. So I want to calm them now, tell them to calm down. Whoever wins will pick them up and bring them together. So they should just calm down. But I, I, I am on the side of Katie. That's what I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not because the minister, I started life with him on campus. And he, those of us who started, especially under the PNDC, we, we have a way of, of passionately giving our case. Those days, there was no position or any reward for it. You could have even been killed. So we believe somehow that, look, let me let me state a case and you wait so some delay in moving our other stay i i i when i lost i i just moved out you, you don't but i haven't you, moved that completely i still go there and help out mm -hmm. but i don't i'm not in the front edge of the constituency but without me to the constituency also may not move so it you got to find a balance mm -hmm. so you're not out if you are not more, more mp you, but you, i believe he, he wants to serve his last step. You, you don't it's believe you, you don't believe in leaving when the applause is high or when the applause is fading he has more to give he, I've, 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 I've discussed he still has more Let to give you, i've discussed with this with him the last time he had another contest and and almost similar but not as heated as this one so some of us will talk privately as a kitty me I'm, I'm at this age you need to calm down and, let's, and, and rest let's pull and rest and take your time he says no i've got to come. and it's true if you look at the number of people leaving parliament this time um senior politicians senior seasoned ones uh, we will be depleted if we are not careful. And the, the they will say, Chairman Sabonso, the Joe Wise, Dambuche, the Atachi, all of them and are so leaving. Katie thought about it and said, let me go and, and hold the fort. And I agreed with him. And so it's an individual decision. I agree with him to go for the content, but he should calm down. His contender should calm down. Whatever we we will back them. But I believe Katie will put. I, I will take you back to Bantama on that question. Why you think that Asensu Boati is the man to do the trick for the NPP to break the eight, and you are still giving him a contest? Asabi, how how does it come across to you that before going into this contest, it was made clear your general secretary uh, laid down the rules: no camping, no campaigning on that day, and all of that. And you are hearing all of this. I mean. We are just how many hours into the voting? But if I heard him right, over 900 people have voted. So I don't know the number of um, uh, uh, delegates uh, delegates voting. Mm. It shouldn't be more than maybe 1,200. Mm. Those are the maximum mm. uh, numbers we have in e most constituents, the bigger ones. So they're almost through. Mm. And so I don't understand where they're talking about. Some have not been allowed in. Maybe. And the, the regional secretary is there. That is my uh, my consolation that he will see to the, the, the rules being adhered to. Um, but if I heard him right, there are different between supporters and delegates. I think you're getting confused about supporters and delegates. Delegates, when they get in, they are on the, um, uh, what do you call it, the album. And they are easily allowed. If he's a delegate and he's a polling station executive and who is a delegate, they're allowed in. Um, if they're not been allowed in, then they should call the uh, election committee members who are at hand, and they would uh, they would let them in. But these are different from supporters. If you come to support somebody and you want accreditation to go in, they can refuse you because you are not voting. So there will be a limit or there will be a, a barrier where you can you cannot go beyond. So uh, uh, the Nicole, who is also a friend of mine. Um, uh, he was at STC, I think, when uh, <laughs> I was a SIGA boss, so he was okay. a deputy. He looks CEO. frustrated, actually. I know he is, but um, he should also calm down. The difference between supporters and delegates. If he's complaining about the album and delegates, then let the regional sec secretary who is there sort it out. Because once you're on the album, you will get through. I went to vote, but, but there was no problem. And when I went, those who were delegates had queued up. And there were supporters who were not delegates who were shouting and screaming. So they are different. You can prevent them from coming to the inner perimeter. Mm. But as for the delegate, they will be allowed. Mm. And with 900 voted, as at what, 11 o'clock, it's almost one. And I believe that's about an hour and a half since the, the nine, 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 900 were mentioned. All of them would have voted. All of them may have voted by now. Mm. I think it's all to do about nothing. Not, it's, it's like a, a, a storm in a teacup. And so people are just agitated. 
Elections are not easy. When you go for a contest, you are tensed, you are agitated, you are apprehensive. You, 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 but the, why so? If you know you've normal. done your job, it's, you, you, you've it's done a, your campaign, you know you have some loyal followers, why should you be worried? But you can never be sure by election until the last ballot paper is counted. <laughs> fear <laughs> delegates. <laughs> Well, fear yourself too. <laughs> let's, you, let's, you must also open up to people so you can trust them. Yeah. Um, but in elections, it's difficult. Mm. Um, people will look at you, smile, but then they vote against you. <laughs> so, That's very sad. <laughs> let, let me bring in Rafiq Salam, who is monitoring events for us uh, in Upper West. He is currently at the Sisala East uh, constituency. Uh, Rafiq, how is go, uh, the voting going so far? I mean... Um, what can you report from there? Voting in the Sesala East uh, constituency is going on uh, well. Uh, uh, not, uh, we don't have uh, uh, many hitches uh, as uh, somewhere or some parts uh, in the country. We are expecting a total of 529 uh, delegates to cast uh, their ballots. And also, we are also told uh, from the EC that uh, four persons uh, will be able to vote because uh, they have uh, passed on. And as I speak to you uh, now, more than 50% of the voters have so far uh, cast their uh, ballots uh, in Tumu. Rafiq Salam, uh, we've witnessed some hitches in some areas. Uh, you are saying that in, uh, in the Sisala East constituency, there's nothing of that sort. Everything is going on smoothly. But have you cited some of the uh, aspirants? Who, have they come to vote? Have you had any conversation with them? Um, yeah, um, I spoke to uh, both candidates and the person of a deputy minister for sanitation and water resources, Ami Duchine Isaku. And also the Fort Fabio Olekra uh, from the Political Science Department of the University of Ghana, Dr. Joshua Jabuntier Zato. Uh, both of them are in high spirit and uh, they think that they will carry uh, the day. I spoke to them, they said they haven't gotten any challenges regarding the process so far, and they think that the process, process is moving on uh, as smoothly uh, in the constituency. And they are really happy and then they are only hoping and praying that two o'clock to knock uh, early uh, for them to be declared a uh, winner. But Rafiq. here in that house, region, yeah. hello. Go ahead, Rafik. But uh, there are other two uh, constituencies where popular acclamation is taking place uh, in the upper West region. One is the Nandam uh, constituency, where the constituency popular acclaim Ambrose their interior minister as the candidate for the party in the 2024 uh, polls. Uh, so speaking to the delegates after he was popular acclaiming, he acclaimed. He paid glory to the founding fathers of the party and also the Catholic Church for what they have done uh, for the people of Nando. But he came out beneath his sleeve with an, a shocking statement saying that come 2028, he will bow out and he will not put his name on the ballot paper again for the Nando uh, constituency. And also in the Lambo State constituency, uh, Dr. Yolvier uh, Baligi is also going on the post in the Lambo State constituency. Rafik Salam, thanks so much for the update from Sisala East. Let me take you to one of the controversial constituencies, Dom Kwabenya, here in Accra. Some female delegates are strongly kicking against the candidature of the incumbent MP Sarah Joa Safo, insisting she has neglected the constituency and must not be given the nod again. They are, however, throwing their support behind Mike Lokwe Jr. By the way, he is the son of the former Speaker of Parliament. For the past 12 years, I was a doctor for that. 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 I was a doctor I'm not going to be a 
My colleague Samuel Mbora is in that constituency. He joins us. Mbora, uh, tell me, have you cited both aspirants, Ajua Safo and Michael Kwe Jr.? I'm not talking about Sheila because I know the contest is between these two. Well, as of now, it is uncertain how the outcome will be, Aisha. Being on the grounds, uh, we, we don't... We, we, it is not quite certain from what the delegates um, are telling us and per their behavior here. So right now you can't you can't pointificate that um, this aspirant is more likely to win. So uh, it is quite an uncertain situation. But what I can say is that um, all three aspirants are here. The first to have come here was um, uh, Sheila Oponsechi. She was the first person when I arrived here at about. Uh, 6 40 to 7 o'clock she was already seated here with her her team engaging the delegates uh, exchanging pleasantries with them the second to arrive was uh, madam um, sarah Adwasa for the incumbent mp uh, she also arrived with her team and then gave the delegates some breakfast that was right, rice porridge uh, with bread and had some brief conversation with her, her team as well but i must say the the, the welcome from the delegates was not that encouraging. Some would have, someone would have expected that at least as an incumbent or a sitting MP uh, should have had a rousing welcome from the delegates. But uh, from the demeanor of the delegates, they were somehow withdrawn in their actions whilst she rather tried to engage them and all that. And the, the last person to arrive at the um, venue here was uh, Michael Quay Jr., uh, who is contesting this election for the third time. He lost about eight votes to Sarah Joseph in the, uh, the last elections and right now he's optimistic that he's going to win the election because the last time the campaign propaganda that was used against him was that he was in India. We know he, he, he was the Ghana ambassador to India so the propaganda used against him was that he wasn't in the country and uh, because of that he is not in touch with the people so for that matter they shouldn't vote for him but now he says that he's back in Accra, he's back in Ghana working as the CEO of the Free Zones Authority and for that matter she has been able to go back to the drawing board and then correct um, the wrongs. Uh, we can listen to that interview that he granted me um, responding to the causes of his loss uh, in the previous election and other matters so far as this uh, election is concerned. All right, we'll try and get that and play that interview. But again, uh, have you spoken with Ajua Safo? Hello, Mbura. Well, when Sarah Ajua Safo arrived, I made several attempts to talk to her. Yeah, can you hear me, Asha? Asha, can you hear me? Mbura, go on. You're on air. We can hear you. Well, right, so when, when Sarah Joseph arrived, I actually made the first attempt and then followed her several times to 
hear from her, at least a word to our viewers and the delegates, but she declined to talk to us. She initially promised that after casting her ballot, she would talk to us, but after casting the ballot, she had a brief conversation with her team, and since then, she had not even made that attempt to talk to uh, uh, the media. But if you look at her body demeanor and posture so far, you could feel that she's somehow not settled yet. You could see that she's somehow agitated within her. Uh, there's some level of tension within her because the atmosphere here is quite uh, un uncertain. You can see the delegates sitting there quietly waiting for their turn to go and cast their ballot. But we don't know who they are going to uh, vote for. And no one can claim at the moment the three aspirants that, okay, maybe it is going in my favor or it is going against this particular person. So far, about a thousand of them, I'm told, have cast their ballots. Uh, if you recall the previous election, they were a little uh, over 900, but the number has increased double as a result of the creation of new polling stations in Domi Kobia. Um, which has actually shot the number to that, uh, that, that level. So, um, for now, Sarah Joasafu wouldn't talk to us on record. Uh, Madame Sheila Opon Sechi wouldn't also talk to us. They are waiting patiently uh, to um, witness the entire election process. Perhaps when the elections are declared, that is where they will be talking to the media. We are also picking information of some sharing of money, with the list being 5,000. Have you also uh, picked up something on this? Well, I, for the moment, I have not had um, any information or any intelligence to that effect. I actually did my background checks here. I spoke to some of the delegates. I also did some behind the doors checking. And then what I can tell you is that I've not ha laid hands on ev any evidence of that uh, nature. But in your short, that is uh, Michael um, Aaron Okwe Jr., uh, the fierce contender to address her for engaging the, the, the delegates. Uh, Honorable, just briefly on Joy News, uh, would you want to share a word with us on Joy News? Yes, what would you have to tell us? Um, your life on the life the cast. What do you have to say so far as this election is talk concerned? To my delegates, no. but at least talk to your outside viewers and the party supporters watching us on Joy News. Uh -huh. How are the prospects like for you in this election? I don't know. Ask the delegates, madam. How are the prospects like in this? I'll talk to the delegates. Ask. Everything is fine. Everything is fine. So that's what the delegate is saying. But you have done your own She's work. What do you have Let to say? She's the only a single person. They are voting. Ask them. But, but that's a single delegate. Are you optimistic of winning? This I'm not money. Talking to them already, but I want to hear from you. So ask them. Ask the delegates. So uh, you are a delegate. Yes. You are here to vote for him. Yeah. Why do you think he's the best person? He is the best candidate for the job. Yeah. What makes you think he's the best person? I know him. He's the grassroots man. He's a grassroots man. Yep. Let me hear from you, sir. What, what, do you agree with her assertion? Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you agree with her assertion that he should be the candidate to lead the party? Yes, yes. yes. What makes you think so? Oh, she's good. That he will get everything. So he's a good man. Actually, there's a few of the delegates uh, endorsing the candidature, but there's another tent over there. I wish we could have the opportunity to go there. But let, let me just take a final word from you. Your, your people are watching you on the Joy News channel. We know we are live and colored everywhere. What is the message from Michael Okwe Jr.? So far as this election is concerned, you are going in for the third time, right? Yes, uh, my message is that the elections are going well. People are voting. Um, last time, they had the... Um, no, no, we, are, we are listening. We are listening. I just want to make sure they don't they stampede. Let, we can make progress. We are, we are okay. Uh, we are okay. We are okay. Everybody are okay. Your people are watching you. What do you have to tell them? Last time, uh, delegates were here. The delegates were in the sun. They were suffering. So this time, I personally provided canopies and chairs for the delegates so that they can sit down and be away from the sun. So I was making a very funny side joke that my colleague candidates who did not provide the canopies and the chairs, they can shake them in the sun, but they shouldn't come and shake them with the seats and the canopy. But that's just by the way, just a joke. <laughs>
I see. So <laughs> what is your message to Ghanaians then? So far as this election is concerned, the last time you lost by eight votes to Sarah Juasafu. What is the trick that will work for you this time round? Oh, you asked me this question in the morning. I forgot it. Uh, and I answered you that. Then I was in India and she was in Ghana. Now I'm in Ghana and she was in America. So we'll see what happens. What is your projection, your win projection? Well, my projection is the count. So when they count, I'll know the projection at that time. Is Ajua Safo giving you a headache? Oh, I mean, I don't have a headache, so I don't know who can give me a headache. I don't have any headache at all. You think she's competent? She has done well for the people of Dom You know that uh, Ajua is my sister in the party. I can't say anything bad about her outside. But when I meet my delegates at home, and we see him come on. You don't wash your dirty linen in public. So whatever the issue is with Adwa, I'll say it to the delegates and it stays there. The last time we had that interview, you told me that uh, there's some level of anger and anguish within the party and the delegates will speak for it today. Yes. Taking into consideration that at a point she absconded her parliamentary duties and your people were not happy, the minority had to shield her and all that. You think that is going to manifest today? I cannot comment on those details. As I said, those are general statements, no details to come from me. So you are optimistic of a win? Well, I pray to God that uh, I find favor with the delegates. I've served them. I've been there for them all this time. When even the MP wasn't there, I was the one doing everything with them. So I pray that when they get to the booth, they also have favor with me and also vote for me to lead them so they can see what I can do for the constituency. When I came, I heard them mentioning a particular name. That indicates that you, you are more than less a grassroots man. And even your manifesto that you have provided, you say you are the grassroots man. Why, how, is it the case that you are the homeboy in Domi Kobia? Well, I've been living in Domi Kobia since 1981. So, I mean, I've been playing football in Hacho. I was a number six. I was known to uh, play Buga a lot. You know, so I've lived with the people. So they know me and they know I am. I'm real. If I'm upset, I'm upset. If I'm happy, I'm happy. If there is a mistake, after all, even your own child can make a mistake and you forgive them if you love them. So we work together and we see what happens in future. All right, but um, have you had intelligence that perhaps your contenders are trying to induce these delegates to vote against you? No, no. I haven't. Is there something going on like that? Because I want to go and report them. Is there anything like that going on? I'm asking for maybe your team is gathering some intelligence. No, 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 nothing like that. You are not also doing same. Everything is free. Are you no, not no, giving no. transport? No, 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 no. You're not giving no. breakfast or lunch? No, I'm giving them tents and chairs. No lunch? No lunch, no transport. Maybe because the election is changing at two. So if by the grace of God I win, I invite all the delegates to come to my house for super lunch. Super lunch. Yes. That's the expectation. Yes, super lunch and bubra. Bubra. Yes. Uh, are your contenders also doing the same? Maybe oh, giving some lunch I or something? I've not got that intelligence. You don't yet. know about that? Yes. I see. But even me, when I lost last time, I gave them fufu and bubra. So imagine if I win. I always want to take care of the delegates because at the end of the day, they are the people who make the party tick. So whether they vote for me or not, I'll still love them. I just pray that that love to one day, they'll show it back to me. I'm hearing a slogan like, no mistake. What does that mean? Oh, the delegates are saying they made a mistake four years ago, but this time, no mistake. No mistake. Yes. The mistake is Ajua Safo. Oh, well, they said four years ago there was a mistake, so you put two and two together. All right, Honorable, I wish you all the best. That's uh, Michael Okwe Jr. there. Uh, she, he is a former ambassador to India and currently the CEO of uh, Ghana Free Zones Authority talking to us now. But right behind me, Aisha, before you get in there, you have to go through some thorough scanning they they have to ensure that you don't send any foreign material into the voting area and that's what the police officers there are, are currently doing so they take 10 people at a go screen them let you get to the second parameter of it then you leave your phone there and then go to cast your ballot uh, like i said the atmosphere here has been calm uh, uh, there's high level of uncertainty as to who is likely um, to win the election. We know anything can, can happen. But one interesting thing uh, or information I picked uh, was that, you know, in the previous election, we know um, Kennedy of Japan was here to support um, the incumbent MP. But this time around, he isn't here. So uh, people feel that the, that disconnect uh, maybe will affect her, her, her fortune. So. That is what I can report for now as we are waiting for the official 
uh, close of polls at 2 p.m. It just left with barely uh, 40 uh, minutes for the polls to uh, close per the communication given by the party. So if you don't have further questions, I'll hand it over back to you, Asha, and the team uh, in the studio from the Domi Kobia, uh, I mean, uh, Atomic uh, Park uh, in the constituency. Actually, it's 44 uh, minutes to ending the elections. That's Samuel Mbora from the Dom Kwabinya constituency. Asabi, you know what baffles me? For sure. after all said and done, I mean, the NPP actually wanted her out, okay? And then you had the opportunity. She came to face the vetting committee, and you still let her go? I you had know, a fine I, I, opportunity I, I, to I dismiss her. I don't buy the idea that we wanted her out. There was a debate. The NPP wanted her out because you said the, she wasn't helping well, the well, work well, of well, parliament. Yeah, there were issues about her absence in parliament, which was an open thing. We all discussed it openly outside and in Parliament. Uh, but she's a party member. She, she still wants to contest. And you can't use that to disqualify her, no. So we gave her a chance. And of course... What, what's, um, what does your constitution say? I mean, your, well, I've heard your national organizer come to say that anybody who doesn't support a certain decision by the party must resign or has it's, breached it's the, the constitution, constitution. The constitution and all of that. Somebody is in parliament and it's not helping your cause and you can't use that to disqualify no, her. It's because we, we also needed to hear her side. And from some information we picked up, she wasn't in the best of health. Uh, to calm down. I mean, there's a lot of debate, which we, we could have investigated it. But we she was have, all over on social was, media. Oh, but I don't know whether you've heard something called postnatal depression. And, but she looked I don't okay. Know, but I thought so. I, I've worked in England and I've gone through training on postnatal depression when mm. young ladies have children. It, you never know. So now she's cured of now it? She's, I don't know. I am not a prof medical professional. <laughs> but I can tell you that there were issues and the issues may... It may be part of the health issues, but we never investigated it. But she's a party member, and she was allowed in the vetting to go. So that's uh, water down the drain or the bridge. Going forward, I looking at the scene there, it's, it's exciting. You see, if you are not a party person, you stand outside, oh, they are, they are, they are fighting. They're... No, no, no. Look at them. They're excited, singing, laughing. It energizes the party base. That's only yeah. delegates. They will laugh with you and go and disgrace Ooh, yeah, you. Yeah, but that's part of it. You got to you got to read between the lines. And if you think they are not supporting you, you better back off. If you want to be in there, get part of the game and, and be part of the game. Mm. And I, I am enjoying the excitement. After this one, you see them, the party's energy is up. And that's what we need to tap and get everybody on board again. Um, Adwa is, is like a sister to me. I mean, if you don't know, I've, I've supported Adwa throughout. Most of the contest she's been there. Uh, and Mike is, is like a brother to me. Mike's father, um, Michael Green Sr., uh, is, is a party sword. Okay. Uh, when I came from London, he wanted me as a deputy energy. And then President Kufo then shifted me to local government as a, a, a full cabinet minister. Mm -hmm. Me and Mike have stayed together. And the, his son is like a brother to me. When mm -hmm. he was in there, we were collaborating on a lot of things at Siga. So the two of them, I don't have a back in there. That one, I'm just looking at the two of them. Anyone who wins, I'm okay with them. Mm -hmm. um, but the excitement created, it should calm down as they've done. And Michael Kufo was addressing the delegates, and your, your reporter was still talking. That's where the votes are. His priority is the delegates, <laughs> not you. No, not <laughs> but, but, but do you know the signal that the saints that oh as for the NPP you can just do whatever you like and then you come and apologize and then you are you are no, no, we have we have discipline in the you party are, I must admit the, the point is is there something that Ajua Safu brings to board that I mean we may not know I mean as outsiders she's because it Ajua looks like she's, she, she's untouchable no no nobody's untouchable in this part the party is supreme but we look at individual cases case by case Adjua's case bordered on, on health grounds as well. Most, most of you, we don't talk about it. I'm, I'm here talking about it, right, because I, I was listening to the behind the scenes. I never commented. If you notice, June, I never said anything because I was picking up signals from us and I made mention of postnatal. Sometimes you're not aware that you yourself, you are under postnatal depression. You think you're normal. So, yes, I'll post a selfie out. But, hey, go through. It's, it's after a baby. Uh, it's not easy. It's not easy. So let's calm down. She come around and she's gone back to the constituency. She's met the delegates. Now it's up to them to decide if they want her back or and it's divided, as you could see. Equally divided. But you see, there's a third force we are not mentioning. Sheila. Yeah, Sheila. You see? 
and you can never tell. Politics, she may remain the calm one at the background before you know she goes through the middle quietly. Some say she, she was it. planted. By who? <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> Aisha, by who? In our, in our party, uh, and if you notice this uh, pa uh, parliamentary promise, we never stopped anybody. In fact, there were complaints by some people who thought we should have stopped them. Um, because that's a part of our constitution. We talked about your contribution to the party for the last two years. You got to actively have nurtured the constituency. Some of them we believe never did. Complaints came up. But the general secretary and the chairman and the, uh, the national executive and national council say, hey, uh, if they are party members and you qualify on the basics, let them go through. So that they don't come out and say, ah, you, 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 allow, you didn't allow me, I'm going independent. When you are in government, independent candidates are dangerous. Mm -hmm. So you, you got to try and, and rope everybody in. So as you go on before, you know the quiet one uh, might, might steal the show. It's an exciting area. I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward yeah, to it. Yeah, we're all looking forward to seeing what happens in uh, Dom Kwabenya. And whatever happens will have an impact on the NPP going forward. But let's go to Nsaome Dwejri because uh, some delegates are alleged to have shown their ballot to one smart Amuafo, a supporter of the MP. And that led to a fight. There's Nano Sema for there who... Uh, Money is monitoring events for us. Uh, he's joined us. Uh, Osei Mafo, uh, we are seeing some confrontations and a number of police officers there. What, what really happened? Very much, Aisha. Matt Amwafo, the NADMO director for the Nishaoma regime, who is an agent for the incumbent MP Frank Anadompe, was heated somehow for to a way to four meters away from the booth was accused of asking delegates to show him their ballot after some printing. Agents of Hayford now raised strong resistance for them. So it took the police to, however, get involved to separate the factions. So at the moment, when you come to the constituency, everything is generally peaceful, and we have barely 39 minutes to close of course and everything is going on smoothly here at the moment. Eastern Regional Secretary of the Party, Tony OJJ, is the supervising officer at the centre here at the Prince Watson Memorial High School, is ensuring the peace and harmony in the constituency and especially where voting is taking place. Some 998 persons are expected to cast their ballots for their candidates to elect a leader to represent the new patriotic party here in the Nisaoma Adjoji constituency. Another prayer is being contested by Hayford Snow, the CEO of the Ghana Library Authority. So when you come here, generally everything is peaceful here. The police are doing their work as it's supposed to be, except the few issues that occurred at 10 30 in the morning. Nana, so um, as we speak now, voting is ongoing and that uh, issue has been resolved. Um, how many people have voted so far? So far, some 925 have voted here in the constituency. So I'm sure by close of vote at two, if not all the 998, at least the party will be able to have some numbers to talk of that at least we had these numbers showing up here in the constituency. At the moment, the constituency is calm and voting is moving on peacefully here. All right, Nana Ose Ma for bringing us uh, those uh, that information from uh, the Insawo Medwejri constituency. Anodon Pre is the incumbent MP. Well, I haven't heard his name. Uh, um, on that list of the giants who will be falling, but definitely uh, you, you just have to <laughs> you have to fear delegates. I but in the wager constituency, <laughs> I'll talk about that later. But in the wager constituency, there's also a clash between the police and some unknown men believed to be supporters of Jerry Ahmed. One person has been arrested after he attempted to attack the police. Uh, Kenneth JC is our man there. He joins us. Kenneth what led to the scaffold?
Right, uh, Aisha, before you are allowed entry into the perimeters of the voting center, you will have to uh, be someone who has accreditation. So they are issued accreditations. These men, we are told, entered here without accreditation, and that led to a confrontation between them and the police. I mean, one tried attacking the police, as you rightly mentioned, and then the police had to arrest one of them who had a cut around his neck due to the scaffold that happened between uh, the two of them. Earlier, uh, I, I did indicate that there has been widespread issues of vote buying. Some people are accusing the incumbent MP Tina Mensah of sharing 2,000 Ghana cities to people believed to be in her camp and leaving out the rest. Uh, meanwhile, they are also saying that the challenger, uh, who is uh, in the person of Jerry Ahmed, has also shared 200 Ghana cities to each delegate, regardless of which camp you belong to. Voting is still ongoing. There are a few people who are still in queue trying to uh, wait for their turn to, to vote. But the, those who have voted say that the uh, election has been smooth. It has been without any scaffold except what happened between those unknown men believed to be supporters of the contender Jerry Ahmed and the police which has led to one of them being arrested uh, Aisha can I just see so um, you say about how many people have re uh, voted so far Right, so more than 500 people have voted so far, we're told by the uh, Electoral Commission here. A few of them are also left, uh, you know, to vote. They're expecting about 1,191 persons to vote because there are 1,210 names on the register, but 19 of them are deceased. Uh, so minus 19, that leaves them with 1,191 who are expected to vote. Not all of them turned out, but those that have turned out, more than half of them have voted. Let's get closer and speak to the Deputy National Women's Organization Party. Word with us. Good afternoon. You're live on Joy News. Hi, good afternoon. Right. Uh, I believe you are here to monitor uh, proceedings. How has it been so far? So far, I must confess, it's been um, quite positive. Um, gone were the day that you would have elections. We have a lot of recorded incidences of violence. But this time around, I think it's quite minimal as compared to previous years. I've been to a couple of centers, very peaceful, very understanding. I think these are, this center is one of the few places with recorded incidents of violence. But in, all, in, in general, the overall overview of it, I think that it's quite peaceful. And um, kudos to um, the party leadership, uh, MPP party leadership, for bringing out a good rules and regulation to govern this electoral process. That every member of the party, whether delegate, a parliamentary candidate, is being adhered to. Again, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the electoral commission, thank the security services led by the police, and then the media as well. With the support of you guys, I think we have one of the peaceful and successful elections. We've heard incidents of vote buying. The delegates have confirmed to us that Tina Mensah has been sharing 2,000 Ghana cities to some of her supporters. That is midnight, this midnight. And also uh, uh, the contender, Jerry Ahmed, has also been sharing 200 Ghana cities. Why has there been widespread vote buying going on? Um, I want to talk um, emphatically regarding equivocation. Um, vote buying is something that is being um, alleged each time there's an election going on, even at the local elections, right at the, even in classrooms, in schools, campuses, it's been alleged that there's, there's always incidences of vote buying. As I am standing here today, I have not witnessed somebody giving money to a delegate to go and vote for him or her. But of course, if it happened, I can't confirm to that because I don't have any evidence to that. But of course, it's happening everywhere. It has been alleged everywhere. And um, I think it's high time, um, if it is really happening, it's high time we look into um, 
it's it's not something worth worthy uh, uh, worthy we have to look into stopping that or something okay all right thank you very much uh, so that is the deputy national women's organizer of the uh, new patriotic party so this is the uh, police vehicle that whisked uh, those gentlemen away one of them being arrested after uh, confronting the police and then trying to enter the premises without accreditation so this is the scene here at the Weija uh, Gbawe MA Basic School B or MA Basic School 2 here in the Greater Accra region where the incumbent Tina Mensa who calls herself the landlady of the area is trying to uh, go for another term and is being challenged by the CEO of the authority, Jerry Ahmed, who says he is a tenant who is trying to, uh, you know, oust uh, the landlady of the constituency. Uh, there's been relative calm, it's been peaceful, except that one incident that happened earlier, and also the incident of go, uh, vote buying has been rife. A lot of delegates have expressed their anger of not getting 2,000 Ghana cities, which was shared at dawn by the incumbent MP, uh, Tina Mensah, and also 200 Ghana cities that were shared by the uh, CEO of Coastal Development Authority, Jerry Ahmed, who is trying to unseat incumbent MP Tina Mensah. And have you been able to speak with Tina Mensah? Have you spotted her? And what has been her response to the allegations? Yes. Yes. Uh, Tina Mensah has shut down those allegations. When I spoke to her earlier, she did maintain that she had wished that uh, uh, Jerry Ahmed was not allowed to contest. She made that allegation during the vet in, uh, a few weeks ago that uh, Jerry Ahmed has not stayed at this constituency for two years or more per the party's regulation. But since the party is saying that if they oust or if they disallow Jerry Ahmed to contest in this constituency, it will make the party unattractive and, uh, you know, it, it, it will move a lot of youth away from the party. That is why she allowed uh, Jerry Ahmed to contest and has shut down the allegations of vote buying, but maintains that she is going to win. She's not scared of a competition. In fact, Jerry Ahmed is no competition or no match for her, and that she will win once again. Can I Jesse from the Wager constituency? This is where to stay, your election headquarters. Definitely, we have our men scattered in all the constituencies. They'll be bringing us updates as and when it unfolds. But if you're looking for where to get all the information, it is your election headquarters here on Joy News. I'm taking you back to Bantama. Uh, Asenso Boache is the incumbent. He's being challenged by Rafael um, uh, Kennedy, Japan's brother, and uh, this morning there's been some showdown already. Uh, let's go there and listen to Asenso Boache, who's been speaking with my colleague there. And wh why morning motion before coming here? I, 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 that's what I do every time that I go to the Some people decide to do it. So, this time the code of conduct was different. That um, no one should come delegate. And people are mad that and nobody has come delegate. Nobody has come delegate. So, don't, don't even bring that. Have you seen, do you have any evidence to suggest that a delegate? I, 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 see, I, have, I, I was at the church, I saw, you know, the, the, the guardian. No, 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 it was a money motion. And some people decided to, 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 to join. There was no, uh, no delegate. So they were allowed to go in and out of the church? church, church Anybody, and the people you saw at the church, many of them were not there. Some were residents, when I uh, mentioned that I would be having a morning the church, uh, the, the motion, so they decided to join. So uh, maybe some of the delegates joined. That's fine. Yeah. Also, rest yeah. it is suggested that after that they were they were biased today because I saw some people being biased. Here. I don't know. They, 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 they might have made their own arrangement. All right. Thank you very much. So. And you said that. 
You just saw the Asenso Boachi, the incumbent MP for Bantama, and you've seen that fierce, um, you know, leading up to this election, the campaigns and the strong words by his contender, Rafael in Japan. And today we'll find out uh, who really owns Bantama. And uh, that question I asked you, if you thought that uh, uh, Asenso Boachi was the man, and he was the man to do the trick for the NPP. Why then do you allow somebody to contest him? Because your executives, they have the power to stop anybody from contesting someone if they don't want. Um, but we are a democratic party. Um, and we, we are as fair as we can be to everybody. Um, yes, there are some MPs uh, or some individuals who are heavyweights. And usually we, we sort of wish them to be in parliament. But it's up to the, 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 the candidate himself and the party executive to talk to the other uh, uh, possible contenders and convince them why they should back off if that's the case. We do that behind the scenes. We don't come and tell you. But some people will stand there and say, oh, I want to put my heart in, and you cannot stop them. So, yes, as in Sue's case, for instance, I wish that he had been allowed to go unopposed. Um, I guess about 33 of our uh, candidates were allowed to go on the post. Yeah. So I said, so maybe. But then you, you notice a strong brother of the, the contender. Uh, uh, was, it never Kennedy, down. was it Kennedy Japo who gave you that showdown for you to allow his brother to contest Asen Sobwati? Because you, I know Asen Sobwati is a darling boy. Uh, I mean, it would have been just easy to allow him to go on a post. Asen so has paid his dues in the party when he was a young man in the university tertiary and was the test con first test con president. He's, he's achieved a lot in his short time in politics uh, compared to some of us. Um, but you've got to be democratic and not be, be personalizing issues when it comes to politics. Um, and then you have to look at, at the aftermath. When we finish, would the other contender be happy to join the campaign? If not, then the party must take a decision and look. Like the Jerry's case in um, Wager, where Tina thought you couldn't, he hadn't been there. He himself described himself as a, as a tenant, mm -hmm. wanting to overthrow a lot. A landlady. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but the party has to say, look, he, he's holding a, a huge chunk of delegates. If you disqualify him, what's the consequence after that? And he's a party member. Does he qualify under the party constitution and regulation? Yes, let him go. So we have, we have to take political decisions. So it's not like every time we, we it's our own rules, right? It's our political party decision and regulation. We can waive it um, and we can consider. So I give credit to the national executives and the national council for making the, this election very, very free and fair. Yes, some preferred others could have been banned, but no, let them go. And I, I said I support Asensu to run with you, I'm backing Asensu to win. And he'll win. You, I'll tell you he'll win. I, look, I can bet you he'll win. He's, he's, a, he's a shrewd operator. Asensu is a shrewd operator. There are people who, obviously politics, not everybody likes you. It means sitting here, not everybody likes me. But, but I have a, a fair idea as to what makes me tick in public life. It's honesty, loyalty to the party, and serving with humility the people I came to serve. If I don't have those qualities, I must as well go and do my private business, right? But in the public space, I've got to be loyal to the party. I've got to be loyal to my leader. I've got to be honest about what I do, and the people around me and be humble enough to serve them. Um, you cannot raise your shoulders. I think you, you know everything. No, you listen. So the party takes all these decisions into account and, and give us... And so far, if you look at or listen to all your reports, no major incidents anywhere. Smooth almost everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yes, minor incident. Once somebody has been picked up in wager, um, he may not even be a delegate. maybe a supporter who got excited. Excitement, as I said, anxiety, uh, pressure. Uh, it's, it's the most interesting, intense heat moment for politicians. But, but, but you listen to constituents and some say Asen Sopoachi is not that approachable. Some even say he's stingy. Have you heard that? <laughs> <laughs> you, see, oh, you see, this policy, you can never win everybody. Let me tell you, I've been to Bantima several times um, and Asen so is down to earth. He's done a lot of projects. A lot. Um, not only projects, he's always over there. Whenever you're looking for a census in Accra, in Accra, he's in Kumasi. And, he's, so, and I know most of his, his uh, executives. Um, and I don't buy this thingy thing. 
Some people approach you and they think you should have money for them every time. But you Sometimes promised I said to them. You, you, prom you promised them. You promised heaven and you earth when you knew we that we, we you were not supposed to do everything. That's we, how come you buy see, coffin see, for people that you don't even know because you promised them. Uh, there's this general impression politicians promise heaven and, and don't deliver. It's not true. We, we sort of gauge what we can do and then use the language that fits in. <laughs> and, and sometimes if you, you promise might... people that you bring them water, you make sure you connect them to the, uh, uh, the national grid. Yeah, you and are... you know that you are not directly in charge yeah, of but, that. But if you're a member of then parliament, you must be ready to, Aisha, to foot the bill. Aisha, if you are a strong member of parliament, you must be able to lobby and deliver. I was a member of parliament in Vancouver for one term. Look, I delivered. And, and my name is still there. Even a market has been named after me, Asabi Market. Okay. And because I, I, I developed the area, it was a, a dump yard, I developed, developed it and shifted some of the market women there, they named it after me. So if, if you don't deliver, I mean, constituents will be um, justified to kick you out. Oh, yes, why not? But, but the point is that you must have the ability to meet ministers, the president, if you are in government. You have to, even if you are in opposition, you must have a way to raise somebody in government. Look, we've been in opposition. I, I have a way of even reaching the NDC ministers when we were in opposition. Okay. You've you, you got to have the human, human relations that builds across bridges. And, and so you can promise and say, look, I'll try and do that. But China is the worst you use. You can say, look, I will try and do this. I will, so you leave a, a window of, of, of when you are, you are, hey, you promise it. So I say, I use the word, I'll try. Mm. So if you didn't succeed, it's not my fault. Mm -hmm. Or I will lobby hard. <laughs> or I know these connections. I have a network. Mm. It, let people know that you don't, you're not the final decision maker. Um, so, but then you, journalists, for instance, ah, he promised roads. But it's not a road minister, but I can trade in. If I, I was a minister for local government, for instance, and what, one thing I did, I can tell you, I traded in um, uh, a water from Fantiman for a market for Hakman Ushwajima, in Kofodia. Mm. I'm a minister. We sat in the cabinet table and I said, Uncle Hakman, I need water. In Fantiman, had no water. So we had to go and drink the beef, you cream water uh, system. And he, he gave me the chance. I went to the president, President Kufu. We got the Dutch to come in with some uh, facility. And then I asked, because local government, I had the, uh, the resources for market. So I gave him a, uh, he gave me water. So that's the lobbying capacity of a, a politician. Yeah, so if, if the um, constituents are demanding what you promised them, they, they, they'll just be fair. But if you can't deliver, go back. You see, the, the key thing about politics is, is the connection, is the, is the communication, is the, is the networking. If you keep away and they keep saying the same thing and you don't address it, it means it's true. You are not delivering. If you go to them, you have a forum. You meet them one-on-one, -on -one, open your doors. They understand why well, you are not what delivering. Do you, what do you think about Rafael Japon and his brother, Kennedy Japon, campaigning for mm. him mm. and all the showdown yes. that he's been giving? It's exciting. All, all <laughs> it's exciting. I mean, proud to today's election. I, exactly. no. You, sometimes in politics, don't like, don't take the boring down the middle of the road and the normal. I don't. I am. I'm somebody who is always like, when you meet me, I'm, there's no dull moment with me, is there? Mm. I give you something to think about. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> so, so, so in politics, when you have a situation with Asensu Bajis and Kennedy Japan pitching camp in Bantama, which is one of our base, uh, it's so exciting. Everybody wants to know what's going there. The whole of your reporting, you go back to Bantama often, don't you? Yes. And it also excites the party base. For me, that's the beauty of a contest. Um, a contest g gives the party people a chance to voice themselves, their voice, their, 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 their voices out, <coughs> to, to voice their concerns out, and also to address them, and also to get them on the keel that carries the momentum to the general election. Because we have 2024 December coming, and you need to keep the momentum for the next... 10 months mm. and that is the beginning of it the mpp is on a roll this if it goes smoothly which i believe it will and we would finish with no incidents major anywhere um if you listen to rafik in wa yeah um, yeah and this is the wa <laughs> But, but, but listening to you with how your party structures who goes unopposed and who can be, uh, you know, who yeah. somebody can oppose, it, it's quite interesting. And there's a trend which I don't know if you have, it's come to your notice. The fact that um, some people uh, want, they know they actually are not going, but they would, they would um, show, uh, you know, present themselves that they want to go 
because they want to secure the spot for someone else. <laughs> and, 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 and straight away, a Kapim, uh, is it Kapim ah, South? Or a Kapim, a Kapim South? A Kapim Every, South. Yeah. And, and, and exactly what Obi Amwa has done. Because prior to the um, elections, uh, people knew that he wasn't going. I'm sure maybe he had spoken with one or two people. So it was, I mean, it was just general knowledge that he wasn't going. Then he shows up and says, I want to go. And your constitution uh, does not allow him, anybody to compete with him. And then last, no, the last minute. MC or DC. Uh -huh, an, an MC to compete, to compete with yeah, an incumbent MC. It's a regulation. It's not and so regulation. last minute, then he says, I'm not going. But he denied the MC the opportunity to also contest. I think there's a petition from the MC and the party has put that place on hold. And, and so that, I don't want to comment too much on that. Um, in politics, things change so rapidly, you can't believe it. And so that's why if you're a politician, you must think on your feet. Um, people change their mind. People change their mind. And you're allowed to. This is, it, it this is, not, is it's not set in stone. This is too sudden not to be deliberate. <laughs> you are reading his mind here. You're a mind reader, are you? That's how, uh, that's how think, other people are reading. behind it? <laughs> no. I mean, that's what people Obi, think. Obi is a, is a friend of mine. That he I secured know. the spot for his PA. I wouldn't comment on that. Obi is an honest politician, very straight down the line. In terms of statistics and how analysis is done in politics, in our party, I can't see anybody go past Obi Amwa. And Obi is so honest that he may have decided not to go. Something must have changed and he wanted to go again. In terms of whether he was seeking a slot for something, I don't know. That's why the party has put a hold on it. Let's wait for the outcome. They will go for the contest. If the party allows the MC to go, fine. If they don't, that's democracy. But you will listen. You will listen. Mm -hmm. His petitioner here. So, but going back to what we're saying, politics is such an interesting that if you are into politics, be honest, be straightforward, and also be prepared to serve. You'll be hit. Yes, you, you don't go scot free. Mm -hmm. You'll be hit. But you must have the tough skin to listen and go home and sleep and think again and come back. Mm. But what we are doing now is a prelude to the, the December election. It is the question of, would we get back together after this contest with the tension and all that? What I'm looking at is a silver lining of calmness and coming back together and nobody gets hurt mm. um, physically or emotionally distraught too much. So that coming back becomes a problem. So I'm appealing to our party people that this is part of our game. If you are scared of a contest, you are not a politician. Mm -hmm. You will lose some, you will, you will win some. That's part of it. If you lose, it, it teaches you a lesson in life. Mm. Do, do you foresee that, um, you know, that unity coming so easily? For instance, in Bantama, if somebody like Raphael loses, you've heard the threats from his brother. It's not going to be easy. Um, I've heard the threats. I, I didn't take it seriously anyway. Ken knows me. I mean... I tried to reach him, he won't pick my call, and I said, yes, <laughs> but what's the threat for? If you have anything open, put it out. Or some of us, you know, we can know, we listen to him. But he never reached out to me or to anyone I can think of. So it's a, it's a, it's a threat I don't take serious. Whatever it is, it raises the temperature, <coughs> which is not healthy for, for us. It, after that, I mean, I will find out, I'll still reach Ken, Ken, Ken in Japan. I'll reach him. I'll find out the basis. Because what he says, some of them are serious issues and bordering on state matters. And I want to know, you understand? Yeah. We want to clean up if there's any problem. So you cannot just raise it and disappear and say, if you vote for my brother, uh, I won't raise it. But if you don't vote for my what kind of logic is this? <laughs> so we will get to that point. But for me, his brother is a contender and I wish him luck, but I'm, I'm back in Asensu. I believe Asensu has done a fantastic job in Bantima. I believe that he would win. And, and it's just a lesson to him, too. He's a young man. He's learning. If at least has, it has put him on his toes. <laughs> if you remember the last two elections, he's, he's come through nicely. But now this one is a test. <laughs> it, it builds him up. I believe this one would make him a stronger character. <laughs> Your election headquarters is brought to you by Petrosol. Uh, Petrosol has been behind all the coverage you've been seeing, and they'll be supporting us throughout the elections in December. Um, where to stay for everything uh, MPP parliamentary primary is your election headquarters. And of course, uh, we'll be going through the list of the giants who will be falling. Uh -huh. <laughs> 
I didn't make that list. Um, I mean, it's the political watchers. They are watching the space and they think that uh, there are certain people who definitely will fall. But again, you cannot delegate. <clears throat> you, you have to fear delegates. You may think that uh, this is what uh, will happen, but the delegates will always pull a surprise on you. And if I want to even just um, run through just of the few of the names that I have, um, definitely you have someone like uh, Katie Hammond's name coming up. You have a new Medu entry's name coming up. Ah, that's yes. my, that's my, my side, the other side, Kodomo. Okay. His name is here. Um, you have somebody like John Kuma. Uh, you know, um, he's getting some fierce opposition there. He's struggling, actually. Uh, if he wins, it will be a struggle to win. People think that it's not going to be a, an easy game for him. Uh, upon Kuma, um, he, he, no, yes, I mean, he's, he's not going to fall, but I think there's fierce opposition also in his constituency compared to the previous election. So these are some of the names, but let me also share with you a breakdown of the uh, regions, the, the numbers there, it will be showing on your screen. So, right, before that, maybe we should talk about the MPs who have decided not to go. And uh, Joe Gatte is one of yeah, them. I'll say Chairman Sabonso is one of them. Uh, Joe Weiss is mm -hmm. not going. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, Bekwai, uh, a number of them. Uh, what's his name again? Atachia. Atachia is not going. Damboche is not going. That, that's a whole lot of experience moving out of parliament. This is one of the reasons why I want Katie in. You want Katie in? <laughs> I want Katie in. Okay, let's go to Martina. Uh, Martina, where are you? Which constituency are you right now? And what's going on there? I'm in the Yendi constituency. And so far, it's been largely peaceful, except um, outside where we have supporters of both um, the incumbent MP and Adria Abiba Tashani, who are outside. And um, what they do is any vehicle that is coming in, they want to be sure it is not somebody who is not supposed to be inside who is coming in. And so they have had times that they have had to stop vehicles, bank of vehicles, make some noise. But largely, it's been peaceful. One incident came up um, a while ago. Two candidates came in. Their names were blank, we are told. And, but they had voted in the presidential. And so the two candidates agreed that they that be allowed to vote. And so they have voted. And very soon, they'll be doing the counting. They started packing the boxes already. And we are getting ready for the count. So the Yendi constituency, I mean, have you spotted the aspirants? Have you had any conversation with them? They have um, both said they won't speak now until the re results are declared. And so we would get their reactions as soon as the results are declared. So at the moment, uh, what's the uh, atmosphere? It's tense because um, it could go any side. And so there's tension, you can't Tension and in, in the place there, we have had times that they have had some few arguments, but largely I can see that it's him. Right, you had uh, Martina Bugri, she's in the Yindi constituency with uh, some updates uh, from that constituency. Uh, election ends at two? At uh, two o'clock, so I don't know why they are packing up early. They should wait. Um, somebody may be late coming in, you never know, unless they first just the, the So, so we, we are about to see a showdown when they start the counting and then people and now start That's a hot area. Yendi is, a, Yendi is MPP to the core. Oh, really? Yeah, if you go to... Yeah, uh, uh, Yendi, Farouk Mahama. Ah, Malik al -Hassan. Yeah, that, Malik al who was uh, deputy um, speaker. Yeah, that's right, and became interior minister. Mm. And I've, I've stayed in Yendi late night sometimes, and I enjoy Yendi politics in the Gumba style. Um, and the two of them are hot candidates. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I mean, Malik, Malik looked a very, like a very calm gentleman. Yeah, he, was, he was a senior. He, was, he, he has to be respected. He, yeah. So everybody came down. He trained all of them. Yes. But now the young sister. But not Farouk. No, not well, Farouk. Farouk is, is like me. He's yeah. hot blood. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> he's a young man, and he's, he's met his matching. He actually did very well in the oh, last, last election. election. Yes, he did. And, and he, he took the cue from his father, too. Yeah. From our vice president, mm -hmm. Ali, uh, Muhammad. Ali Muhammad. And he's represented the family very well. And, and I like his style because he's like me in a way. But Abibata, you you'd underestimate her. At She's an place. underdog, Ooh. right? Underdog, but if you know Abi Batista, she also has a, a pedigree of. I think her father was also in the old party, the PFP or the UP, and so she has a pedigree behind her. And they have all they've got bases. So I'm looking forward to that, that particular contest. It's going to be very key. The exciting thing about what I'm saying is is, that, is the cloud. Is is the cloud? How people are converging. This is what you need: the adrenaline in people and the commitment to ensure the party works for all of us my hope and my prayer is that when we finish we all come together mm -hmm. because sometimes Paul, when you lose oh my god it's so dumping Painful. you just disappear yeah <laughs> but yes you but you allow people to grieve yeah just give them room to grieve but find a way to reach them that's what we're going to do as a party we'll reach to we'll reach everybody and bring them on board if anybody decides not to come on board, we'll find a way to still push them to come on board. It's MPP. <laughs> and, and this At the is end the of bank the day. Road. Yes, this is the bank <laughs> route to, to the 7 December election. Let's go to the Wale Wale constituency. Ilyasu Tanko is there. Ilyasu, uh, what can you report from there? Well, it's still a very tense situation here in the Wale Wale constituency. As you know, before this particular day, there have been a lot of uh, controversy. Uh, in that particular constituency last week, we had uh, some supporters of an, a candidate attacking uh, the regional minister and the party council of some part, the party uh, council of elders chairman at his residence where they were holding a meeting. Uh, today, this morning, the election didn't uh, begin early. It started somewhere around eight, six. And as we speak, there are several number of uh, delegates still queued uh, waiting for their turn to vote. It's been very tense. The contest, as we understand, is currently between uh, the sitting MP, who is also the uh, Gender, Children and Social Protection Minister, Haji Allah to Abudu, and then the Vice Presidential uh, Staffer, who is uh, Dr. Kabir Sia Mahama. Uh, there are two others. But from the ground, uh, what we are learning or what we are hearing, especially from the delegate themselves, uh, is that this particular contest is between two, these, these two individuals. We had heard earlier that there were attempts uh, to prevent contests in this particular uh, constituency uh, for the sitting MP to go on a post. Uh, but as to speak, that didn't happen. She's been contested by three people including, I just mentioned, the Vice Presidential Staffer, Dr. Kabir. Uh, but, I mean, voting is ongoing. There are a lot of secrecy. I can count close to 40 police uh, personnel that is currently protecting uh, the process as it's ongoing. Uh, but uh, from the look of things and from speaking to the agents and then the electoral officers, uh, well, the, the, the delegates would have to vote beyond the 2 p.m. that has been stipulated because I can still see a large number of the delegates still in the line waiting for the attempt. Have you cited any of them? Have you spoken with them? Well, I've spoken uh, earlier on. I saw them at the sitting MP herself here. I have been engaged. I engaged uh, Dr. Kabiri himself and one other. Uh, Mahama Jandu, I engaged these two individuals or these two contestants, and they uh, were all hopeful of us uh, winning this particular election. Uh, we have not been able to speak with a member of parliament herself, but uh, she's been around this particular uh, venue since uh, the election or the process began earlier uh, this morning. Elias Otanko is a man. He is in the uh, Wale Wale constituency. Uh, we'll be bringing you more from there. Let's go to uh, Sunyan West. Uh, Precious Semivo is there. Precious, um, I hope that place is calm as well. Generally, it has been calm since the election process started at 7.39 uh, in the morning. It has been generally peaceful here 
not even a single incident has been recorded uh, here uh, because security is that tight. Everywhere you turn to, you see quite a number of uh, police personnel uh, there ensuring that the process uh, goes through uh, successfully. Uh, as I speak to you, the time is due and the electoral uh, officers have started dismantling the uh, uh, booths and packing the uh, tables and other things to start the sorting of the uh, vote uh, cast. But on the candidates taking part in the exercise, the incumbent uh, Ignacio Bafoua, who happens to be the Minister for uh, Labor Relations, uh, he is here sitting at uh, my far right, and uh, other two contenders trying to challenge him for the seat. One, uh, Ama from Poma, lawyer Ama from Poma, and then uh, Mubarak uh, Abdullah Tisi, also sitting here at my right. Now, talking about uh, Abdullah Tisi, uh, he, when I engaged him earlier in the day, uh, he said he was attacked in the morning around 2.15 a.m., uh, on his way from Sunyani to Tra, uh, at a town known as uh, Kobeji, uh, where he was going to see some delegates and, and all that. But he also says that he can't really say whether it was an assassination or uh, it's linked to this uh, election exercise that he's taking uh, part in. Uh, he, he claims to have sustained uh, chest injury and swollen hands uh, even as I can, I can see bandages around his chest and then on his right uh, hand, uh, a bit swollen. Uh, but he says he's managing the case has been reported to the police, uh, though he lost two computers and valuable sum uh, of, of money. But uh, he is doing well here trying to monitor uh, the proceedings. Uh, the minister is confident that what he has done so far the delegates have given him the assurance that they will vote for him again to lead the party in the general election. And he believes the delegates because he has worked with them, he has been in the system for that long, and uh, he trusts them based on his track record. But lawyer Martin Bom also believes that for over 20 years, the minister has done his bit, and he needs to uh, pay with for new energy, new faith, that's the new development that will